and welcome to Eco How. Today we're going to show you how to build a wildlife pond. But before we descend into the boggy world of pond making, you might be asking the question, why build a pond in the first place? Bodies of water of virtually any size have at least some wildlife value. From acting as breeding sites for invertebrates and amphibians, to even providing a place for birds to drink, ponds offer a myriad of benefits for wildlife. And of course, ponds look great and aren't too hard or expensive to make. So the question you should properly ask yourself is, why haven't I got a pond? We're building a naturalistic pond, meaning we're trying to emulate nature and encourage as much wildlife as possible. A general rule of thumb for any pond is the bigger, the better. Bigger ponds have more space for a variety of aquatic and terrestrial habitats. More habitats means more space for different plants and animals that might have specific requirements. Of course, you're always limited by the size of your garden, but try and make the most of what you have. So, what equipment do you need? First, you'll need spray paint, rope or sand to mark out the edge of your pond. A spade for digging. A shovel to move any soil. A piece of wood and a spirit level to check the level of your pond and a tape measure. So the first step is to choose your site. A warm, south-facing, sunny site is ideal for wildlife. Preferably, you want to keep away from trees as leaves can clog up your pond. Clear any vegetation and debris. Our chosen site had concrete over it, which meant bringing out the sledgehammer. Any turf removed can be saved as it might come in handy once a pond is made. The next step is to mark out the edge of the pond. We use non-toxic spray paint, but you can also use string or even sand. Make it as large as possible, as the final pond will be a tiny bit smaller. The next step is to dig out the pond. One of the most important things to remember is at least some sides must be sloping gradually to provide shallow areas for wildlife. These areas are both ideal for breeding and drinking but also can be an escape route for any terrestrial animals and amphibians that want to get out. It's also important to have deeper parts of the pond. At least one part of the pond should be over 60 centimeters deep to prevent the whole pond from freezing in winter. Once dug, make sure your pond is level. Our pond is on a slope. Using rocks and soil dug out of the pond, we created a small bund on the lower side and checked the level using a long piece of wood and a spirit level. Next, we line the pond. You'll need newspaper, old carpet or pond underlay, and polythene or butyl rubber pond liner. A protective layer is needed under the pond liner to prevent it from being punctured. This is where your newspaper, lino, old carpet or pond underlay comes in handy. Line the pond and lay your pond liner over the underlay, leaving plenty of spare liner hanging over the edges. To estimate the size of the pond liner, use the following calculation. Before filling the pond with water, add some soil that you removed earlier. This weighs it down, but also protects the liner from breaking down as quickly in the sunlight. It also provides a great substrate for plants. It's best to use rainwater collected in containers. You can even let the clouds do the work for you but we were a bit too impatient for that. Once the pond is filled and the liner has settled, any extra liner can be removed. And remember that turf that we saved? It can be added to the edges to hide any liner and protect it from sunlight. Right, on to the next stage, stocking the pond. You can now let nature take its course, but if you initially want to add some greenery, use native species from other garden ponds or a garden center. Just be aware of invasive species. You don't want any in your pond. Click here or in the description to find which ones are your plant friends or your plant foes. Right, that's the pond finished. We'll be checking the progress of the Ecosapien pond over the next year. If you want to find out more about ponds, have a look at our info pack on our website. And why not get involved in some pond related citizen science projects? In the UK, the Million Ponds Project aims to create a national network of ponds for wildlife to reverse centuries of pond loss. 
There's also the Dragonfly and Damselfly recording scheme, which is working to find out more about these fascinating insects and help conserve them for the future. In the US there's also Odonata Central, so get involved. Links are also in the description. In the meantime, catch you later.